Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette here with Painting in Your PJs coming to you on a Friday morning. And I am super excited about today's prompt. It's a big one. And on the live the other day, someone had asked me about the entire list of prompts. So I'm putting that in the chat right now so you can go in and download the entire list of prompts if you choose from my teachable so good morning good morning and welcome i wasn't able to be here yesterday so today we're on day four of our end of year reflections journal and as always, I've taken some time to just create some sacred space, light a candle, even in the midst of my chaotic mess over here. My desk seems to have exploded with all the creative fun this week. And I have my mala and I have said some mantras that are really meaningful to me right now. And it felt extra good to create a little bit of support this morning going into a pretty big question for today. And I love this particular mala. This is a, a mala that I made by hand at a beautiful retreat right when I first moved to Colorado this summer. So I love that. Put that down it's kind of noisy and I have my beautiful candle and I have my horse spirit here with me and I have a crystal here with me today and I'm probably going to do some smudging after I work on this page to clear the energy and I'm not sure what's going to come up so it'll be interesting to to see but when it comes to what am I releasing we have looked so far, just to give a, a quick overview of where we've been. So last week I showed how I made this journal. I made a title page using one of my son, Con son Connor's beautiful sacred circle designs. I did a spread on what was 2022 like for me and played with some of those avatars that are going around like crazy. I had a lot of fun with this spread of what am I celebrating? I need to reattach my tag. So this is an actual picture of my front door and I'm celebrating our beautiful new home and first holiday season in our house and being surrounded by wildlife. And I did a little bit of journaling here. I always journal on my pages first. And I put this compass in here because there's been a lot of new directions this year, right? A lot of new directions. So I've got a compass in here on top of this page and some journaling. And I loved this page from an old children's textbook that I had found for 25 cents somewhere and have been loving using the, the collage images. And this really feels like celebrating community and starting to build community here in our new home. This page was all about what memories do I want to bring forward? What memories do I want to bring forward? And I decided to take the perspective of using I am statements, which are so powerful. And so rather than looking at memories or sort of creating a scrapbooky page, all of ideas that I thought about, which would have been awesome, I thought about What's the energy that I want to take from those memories? And so that was the prompt number three. And today's prompt is all about, <coughs> excuse me, what am I releasing? What am I releasing? So these are the things that happened or, you know, the, the feelings that I had. And I'm cutting the tips off of these makeup sponges so that I can reuse them for some stenciling while we're talking but these are the things that happened or didn't happen or how I felt about them. And I haven't done that journaling yet. So I thought we'd start by doing that to gather today. If you're joining me live, be sure and say 
hello this morning. Be sure and say hello in the chat. I'd love to know that you're here with me. And if you're just joining me, I put a link in the chat to and in the description of this video to the entire list of 22 prompts for 2022. Good morning, Jill. Thanks for being here bright and early on a Friday morning. So what do I want to release from this year? So I want to release doubt. I'm going to release fear. You know, moving is, is never easy. My daughter had surgery this year, so there was a lot of worry. You know, change always creates anxiety. I'm going to release some of the grief and sorrow that I've been holding on to from this past year. Moving always creates a lot of grief for me. And I'm starting, I did gesso my page and I have put some paper tape in here to reinforce the center of the page that was coming out in yesterday's video. And I am starting with some oil pastels. It's a, a fun way to get that first layer down, just get some color, get over the, the blank page. The other thing that I really want to release is busyness. What I'm looking forward to and what I want more of next year is simplicity. And so I want to release busyness. I want to release chaos, right? Moving always feels like a, a lot of chaos and it took me a while to feel settled in my new home. So maybe I'm going to release chaos and overwhelm. And it's not to say that I won't feel any and all of these. <laughs> in 2023, I'm sure I will feel all of these, but they'll be perhaps triggered by new incidents. But I want to release the, one, the way that I was holding on to memories attached to these. So yesterday, we really looked at, you know, what memories do I want to bring forward? Well, these are ones that I don't need to, to bring forward. And I'm just feeling like sometimes in the mornings, especially, there's not always words. And I, I just want to scribble a little bit. You know, what is it that I'm releasing? And what am I feeling? And why am I drawing these circles? And they, they have that kind of sort of chaotic feeling of there's just too much going on. I remember one point in March when my husband and I were deep in planning and all the things to that had to happen to purchase our new home and move into our new home and we were so exhausted by decision fatigue right there was no sort of clarity of mind and so it felt like this constant rippling of decisions that that needed to be made and so sometimes it's really fun on these pages just to let some of the energy out you may not know what it is that you're releasing until you start scribbling so allow yourself to just make marks on the page if words aren't coming what's the energy of what it is that you want to release What's the energy, right? So to me, all those decisions just felt like things were going in a million different directions. So here's the chaos of what I'm releasing, right? And I found this collage image that I think I'm going to use on this page somehow. And I, I found both of these and it's like, here's me in the act of releasing and here's how I want to, to feel instead. So this may become part of a different page, may become part of a different page. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to use that one right now, but I want to figure out the energy of release, right? So the energy of release, what is it going to take for me to truly release and let go of 
everything that has happened this year that I don't want to carry the energy of that forward. It's not as much for me about the memories as it is the energy and the emotions that could keep me stuck, right? The energy and emotions that could keep me stuck. So it feels really important. First, let me go protect all of these goodies underneath here. It feels really important to just release this and rebuild this page with a clean slate, right? So I'm not forgetting, I'm not trying to push it down, but I am trying to just release and transform some of those emotions and feelings from all the things that happened this year. Moving was challenging for my business and, you know, it's just managing to keep things going when I was in a lot of transition, which created some scarcity thoughts and, oh, this isn't going to work, right? And just, you know, all the things that happen and some of them were true, like the decision fatigue. Some of them were just thoughts and beliefs that I was holding on to because I went into doubt and fear instead of faith and confidence and the belief that everything is working out perfectly. And so these things aren't gone. I'm just taking in all and just kind of, you know, scratching, bringing back some of those colors and gestures. And what if instead of this sense of chaos here, what I'm really sensing is just this, all the new that's blooming, right? All the new that's blooming and possible. So already I'm sort of transforming everything that I want to release and taking the best of all of those experiences to create something that's new. You could do this with a skewer. It's a fun process. It kind of reminds me of being a kid where you would color with crayon and then color over that crayon with black and then scratch through it. So create some kind of fun texture and images and ways to play in your journal. But the page is still feeling pretty chaotic and how I want it to feel in that sense of release. It's like releasing into a river all of the things that have come and letting them flow past out to the ocean to be refreshed and renewed. That's kind of the energy of how I'm feeling. So I'm going to let this sit here and dry for a second and I'm going to do some fussy cutting of my image. And if you're watching me live or watching the replay, I'd love to hear what is it that you want to release from this year? So I want to release, you know, some of the beliefs around, I can't make this work. This is going to be so hard. I'm going to have to work so hard. I'm going to get tired. So a lot of stories we tell ourselves about what feels impossible. And I want to go into the new year with feelings not of what's impossible, but feelings of what is possible. I want to enter the clean, the new year feeling refreshed, energized, and open to possibility, right? Open to possibility. And so when I saw this in a magazine, I've been holding onto this image for a while and it feels perfect for today, is that I want to be in this sort of, you know, dreamy possibility state. But before I can do that, I do have to clean my slate. I have to clean my slate. I'm just sort of fussy cutting her out so I can put her on a new background and make her my own. It's one of the things about doing collage work or creating intuitive collage. And this is someone's, you know, beautiful illustration from a magazine. And I want to honor that illustration 
and I want to take it and make it my own as well. So I don't know who the artist is, but I'm pretty sure that this was from Breathe Magazine, which is a magazine that I love. Oh, look at these floral doodles on there. So those make it added to the page as well. And I loved that there was a mandala on here and some art supplies when I think about Connor and I and our work around creating a new our mindful patterns membership which is all about integrating creativity spirituality and mindfulness practices through active meditation right so for me Art journaling is, and visual journaling, are always about being an active form of meditation. It is a form of radical self-care, a time when I'm just playing and connecting with myself. I'm not creating for anyone, but it's an opportunity to just really connect with what's going on with me and I'm not great at sitting in silent meditation I'm not great at sitting in silent meditation so for me art becomes my favorite form of meditation when I approach it with the right intention there's definitely some times when I'm in learning mode or teaching mode or I gotta create some social media content mode. But these early morning times for me are often that sacred reflection time. And I believe that spending time in deep reflection is one of the, the biggest gifts that we can give ourselves. And this is inspiring me to put some collage elements on here. What else we got down here? Some more words. Look at that crazy, crazy painting. Here's a wonderful used bookstore owned by the Friends of the Library in Estes Park, Colorado that has a book, a room of books that are all 25 cents. And there were these gorgeous, huge hardback books that were an art magazine and a society magazine from long, long ago, from the 40s, I think. And they make the best collage fodder. And I loved this particular abstract portrait here. So I don't mean to fill the whole page, but just get a few bits of collage. Again, you know, adding collage to your page adds layers of meaning and texture. I'm still in the energy of release and I'm building up these layers as I continue to release a lot of what I've been holding on to. Jill, what are you working on this morning? And if anyone else is joining us live, say good morning. Let me know how you're doing. Are you playing along? Health issues have been a concern this year. That anxiety triggered some high blood pressure, and all of a sudden, after you know a life of great health at 57, I'm having to deal with some cholesterol issues, which are genetic, according to all the tests, not uh, you know diet related. So taking medication for that. So I'm going to release some of those worries and anxieties around health so that I can 
feel even more radiant and vibrant going into the new year. All right, just starting to add some layers. It feels good to put some of just that abstract black and white on there as part of my release. And there is lots to celebrate about this year. It was, um, I was glad I started with a celebration page and then moved to release because it would be easy to just get really caught up in all the things that did not go like expected. And so I would say the a lot of what's been true for me this year maybe more than any other year, is this um, learning to manage my expectations and not to get kind of <clears throat> taken out when things didn't go as I expected. So managing expectations. So I'm releasing some of those expectations. Mm, I love that gel. Thank you for sharing. D doing a good release on the full moon, releasing carbs. Yep, releasing carbs, although that's hard to do right in this holiday season. Can be hard, but I know it's something that um, periodically I do as well, and uh, I always feel so much better when I do that. Add in sugar, which is a carb too, but often for me shows up in a, a different, a different form. And I love the word that best described 2022, right? Mine was topsy turvy, and yours was all about waiting. Woo! I had a lot of that this year too. There's a lot of um, can come with a lot of frustration, disappointment and happy anticipation, right? Happy anticipation. Waiting is an interesting concept. All right, I'm gonna hit this with my dryer. And I figured out how to mute my microphone so you don't have to listen to that. So I'm gonna get this dry. Okay, so I like where this is going. This paper's interesting. I'm glad I'm adding. So I added gesso first, then oil pastels, more gesso, scribed through the gesso, added some collage and matte medium, which is going to just create a little more integrity to these pages because I just used some... Um, just heavyweight, typical printer paper. I didn't put fancy mixed media paper in this journal. I was playing with some new paper and really wanted to test that. So I wanna go back to this idea of a river flowing. Get some, so I'm feeling those blues, kind of like yesterday, but maybe we get some different blues going. Do love this. Uh, I was looking for my indigo that I had yesterday. Love these golden, the high flow, right? Just because they're they do fun things, but they're super, super transparent as well. And what might happen if we just add some water to that? And just let it drip and flow on its own without losing all our images. 
I love what these do. I'm gonna pull that paper down there. Just again, this is about release, right? What does the energy of release feel like, right? It feels a little bit messy, but it also feels incredibly cleansing, like a really good rain. Got some color on this page, don't care. It's all gonna get painted over anyway. All right, so do I have? I'm going to just take this piece of paper, press that down on there. This image was too big, so now I'm just using this as it'll become another piece of collage fodder. And that is a fun way to get some nice marks onto the page. <coughs> Excuse me, not waste paint. And let's try not to get all of that. Well, it won't really matter because it's the same colors on the other page. So it's in the messy middle, right? We're absolutely in the messy middle. And every mixed media page definitely has its own messy middle. But I'm kind of in the, again, I'm just really with this page in the energy of release. What does that feel like? And again, it feels like flow, right? It feels like flow about letting go. some texture in there just using the side of my palette knife it's interesting that I'm adding more faces here like I did on that previous page I've been very drawn to more portraits and illustrations of people and animals Let's bring in some of that uh, gorgeous turquoise from yesterday. So this was the phthalo turquoise from Golden. This lighter blue was the golden teal. Mm, look at how those are mixing on the page. So yummy. And again, that just that freedom of, I'm just releasing. I can still see things that are peeking through, shiny when it's wet in the, in the camera, but there's still some things showing through, but we're really starting to just allow all of that to wash away. Releasing what has been holding me back. Hmm. releasing my need to know, right? Like this is that expectations piece. Releasing my need to control, to feel like I'm in control. In one of my business mastermind communities, we had a big conversation about control and how we really can't control anything, right? How we really can't control anything. And that palette knife off. And that is a glorious, absolutely beautiful mess of a page, right? Mess of a page. <clears throat> I'm gonna just take a baby wipe. Maybe bring those images, memories floating in there, bring a little bit of that collage paper back so I can see it again. And this is how I work, putting paint on, taking paint off. Definitely want to add some white to this. I definitely need to get a trash can over here in my recording space. I just saw my white. And there it is. So I have these super fun stencils from my good friend Andrea Chevalu from a work apart studio. 
and she sells a set of these sort of hand-drawn dots in different shapes and sizes. I think there's four in the set, and I love them. And so when I think about releasing, I'm thinking about bubbles on the river, foam on the ocean, memories just sort of floating by where I'm not holding on to them. I'm going to come in and just add some of these circles to the page. A couple of different sizes. My paint's not dry, so my bubbles are becoming a little blue, which is beautiful, right? So I'm starting just adding that white. Starts to pull the page together. I've still got some darks in here also from these collage images that I've added underneath. So I'm trying to create some variety of tone and tint on the page, even though this is a monochromatic page, right? It's all different shades of blue with a little black and white mixed in. I can still create visual interest and variety just by changing some of the tones and things that I'm up to on the page. Let that dry for a second. I'm gonna think about where to go next. And drink some of my coffee. Somewhere in this very messy stash of stuff, I have one of my favorite tools, which is a Stabilo Marks All pencil that writes on anything, and it's water soluble, right? Stabilo, it's hard to read in that light, that's kind of crazy, but it writes on just about anything, but I love using it in mixed media pages. So I'm going to bring some of this black in here and just add a little shadow to the bottoms of these bubbles. I'm being pretty scribbly. You notice I'm holding my pencil loosely out at the end. Hmm. So one of the things I'm releasing is control, right? So if I release control in my art, I'm not holding things tightly. I'm holding onto them loosely. And I'm going to come in and get that wet. That was a little bit too much water and everything's still a little wet. So I'm getting a nice gray, but not that black I wanted. But starting to create now some, just a little bit of shadow in those. So I'm going to hit this with my dryer again. I'm going to take this and just, what else can I do with a little bit of this white on my makeup sponge. Add maybe a few more shapes. I'll just clean this off a little bit. <clears throat> I was just trying to use up some of the white paint on my palette. So I'm going to mute myself here and work with the dryer again. All right, so what if I came in with even a little more intentional black around some of these? Again, just being kind of scribbly and loose. I love working with the Sharpie, right? It's permanent, it's gonna stay there as I continue to work on this page. These big chisel tip Sharpies 
make so many different marks on the page. I absolutely love them. I also have big chisel tip uh, Posca paint markers that I love too. And I'm just sort of repeating shapes around the page. And I'm looking, this is also something I've learned from Andrea to repeat shapes and have a variety of shapes like these bigger circles. They're all kind of the same size. So I've added some different sizes of marks on the page to just continue to create that. I'll come back in here with these shadows again. To just get your eye moving around the page, right? We have a lot of movement flowing this way. If I pause and start to look at, how's it gonna work? So look at those, it looks like she's reflecting back on these memories. Maybe she's releasing family ties or stories. So what are you releasing is a really big, powerful, powerful question to ask ourselves. So I have some black, black, and I have this little bit of gray in here. And if you're wondering how you're doing with your lights and darks, I'm going to just shout out to Andrea a lot today. I have learned so much from her about mixed media journaling over the years. You can snap a picture with your phone. It looks different in the phone, right? I love the way that it looks. And then if I click edit, and I'm on an iPhone, but this little three circles right in the center, it's maybe a little bit different if you're on a different phone. I can take that all the way to black and white, and I can make sure I have a good variety of lights and darks. So I've got a lot of this just sort of mid-tone. I have some whites, they could even be a little whiter. And I have some nice darks around the edge of the page, but I'm sensing that I wanna bring a little more of that dark around the edges of the, the pages and just to frame this a little bit more. But it's a great way to look at your own pages differently. <clears throat> and also you can create, like I'm looking at this and this would make a great collage page. So I save these photos that I take of my art and then I can print them out and use them in my other work. And there's something really cool about repurposing your own art in that way. I know it's something that uh, Andrea speaks of and so does our friend Robin Marie Smith talks a lot about taking photos and repurposing art as well. So I'm thinking I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that turquoise and I'm going to mix, well maybe I'm just going to mix a little of this indigo. Sometimes just mixing our colors together so that they feel like they're in the same family, right? Like they belong here and they're part. We're not just completely adding another color yet while I'm still working hard on the, the background. So I've mixed together my indigo and my turquoise. And what I was feeling was that that just, I wanted a little more boundary around these pages. And then maybe it's I'm putting a, a container around what it is that I want to release. And then I'm also going to bring a little bit of this back. I love painting with my fingers, super fun. All right, and it's easy to go overboard. So again, I'm just using up that paint, making a fun collage page over here. And I like that it's hard to see on the camera, but there's still some of this um, red oil pastel showing underneath. So I'm gonna get this really dry again and see if I can bring a little more of that back or if I want to add some other colors on here. You know, I love that 
she kind of fits the the page with her blouse but you know there's not any other red on the page so she's kind of maybe standing out more than I want her to so I'm gonna figure out what I want to do about that I didn't mute myself that time. You can tell me if the dryer is really annoying. Things are drying nice and fast. So I want to see. Sometimes I can just come back. This paper's not great. And bring back some of that oil pastel where I can still see some just little bits of that. And I can see some of it up here as well. I'm just bringing back some spots of color. Not where I have the collage, right? So it would be hard to, to get to it under the collage, but how Interesting, interesting is that to just maybe find a few spots of color, which was fun to uncover, and it's probably going to get covered up. And there's something about this deep reflection and this reflective face that I'm really liking, like this, these memories over here. Not really liking that that much. So let's just go back in. It's the cool thing about working with acrylics is you just get to paint, remove, paint, remove. Maybe even paint over some of that black, bring a little more of that light back in there. And I know she's there. Now I'm starting to see some of those marks. I can bring some of that back a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I'm ready to commit to putting her down on the page yet. I'm thinking I want to cut out the insides of the arms here. actually enjoy fussy cutting. I'll often sit on the couch and pull images from magazines and do some of the cutting ahead of time so that I have images ready to go when I sit down to do collage work like this. And I'm not super precise about this. If you watch some people, you know, they're in here with their exacto knives and they have an exactness to their cutting that just generally takes a little more patience than I personally have. Okay, that feels better. I think that's what was bugging me was I wanted the completeness of this you know and I, I cut out some of these other little images too but I'm feeling maybe well that one at least brings back some of the color that I was looking for I will save those for something else So this is, again, I'm just working intuitively. I had a theme and a prompt to start with, and I grabbed a box of images that I had previously sourced from magazines, and I just grabbed a couple of those that really spoke to me. Okay, so those are gonna go on there somewhere. So I'm gonna get her 
glued down and figure out some next steps. It's been a blue couple of days. Like I worked with blues yesterday. I do love blues, but I love lots of other colors too. So it's interesting just noticing my own choices as I'm working through these prompts. So I still have some paint on my palette knife there. So let's come in with my catalyst wedge. And I like to get that matte medium underneath and on top as well. So I get her in there nice and flat with no wrinkles. And if I wanted to paint or draw or write over the top of her, I have a nice surface for that. And I have nice pinky fingers, which always makes me happy. I can see her leg is wrinkled, so I'm just going to come in and see if I can smooth that out. And some of that's from the collage images underneath, and I'm just going to gently work that. If you rub magazine images too hard, you can rub the color right off. And so I'd rather have a few little wrinkles. And I'm wanting to bring back some of this color, so I'm going to bring back my oil pastels. And just like I did with the Sharpies, it's not quite bright enough. I'm just going to add a little bit of color, and those colors are really muted, I'm noticing, where I have put down all of these blues. So here is a fun trick for that. And do I want to maybe scrape some of that off? Nah, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so I am going to take a, a nice dry brush. And I'm just gonna come in and make some marks with white. And then I can go back over the top of these when it's dry with that oil pastel and add some more color. And I might even just calm some areas down with a little bit of that white as well. Interesting that oil pastel is actually mixing in with the white. So it's always fun to just really play and experiment with your materials to see what are they going to do? How are they going to interact and play with each other? So I've got a little bit of mud going on there. I'm just going to try to push that back because what I really love are these bubbles. So maybe I'm going to add some highlights to some of these bubbles and lighten them up a little bit because I'm definitely sensing the page. Like it brightens the whole page up to get these super white marks in there. And I'm definitely, oh, she needs a little more glue there. Wanting to add some white around the edges of my figure here to make her pop out a little bit. And I don't want to lose everything that's in the background either, right? I still want to see some of that nice collage peeking through. So I'm going to put that white on. I'm going to wipe it away. So it just softens that background, right? And so I can see it gets her to pop out. And because I put that matte medium over the top of my figure, if I get paint on her, it's really easy to 
wipe that back again. Lost one of my dots over here. Let's add just a few more of those. My favorite part of an art journal page is this part, this sort of, you know, adding all those final touches. I can go a little bonkers with adding lots of marks and patterns. And what it needed was that white more than anything else. But I still feel like it needs just a little pop of color. An oil pastel may not do the, the trick, but what if we came in here with just a little bit of yellow highlights on some of our and add a little yellow to the page. I'm gonna add a little yellow here to just pull that yellow all the way through. And again, making sure I've got that yellow in a few different places around the page. I'm actually not loving the yellow. You don't know until you try, right? So I can just Push that back with a little bit of my white to mute that out a little bit. It's a busy page, but when I think about the, the energy of release, that's often how it feels, right? Like there's a lot of energy moving on the page and it feels important to, to move that out and make room, right? To make room. I'm just... Again, I'm playing with that yellow, toning it down just a little bit. I love these scrapey bits of red here in the, the center. It looks like she's writing and they're coming right out of what it is that she's writing and being released onto the page, right? So this is, again, a page about release and moving energy. I'm not trying to make it absolutely perfect. Come back in and just add a little bit of black around her, maybe a little shadow down here where she's sitting. Helps her stand out on the page and looks like she's landed on the page as opposed to just floating on the page. And I have a rag in my lap. It's one of the, the ways that I like to work is just um, keeping the rag and the page close by and working with acrylic and these mixed media materials. I like a really dry brush and given that the paper I'm working on isn't super strong, then it helps not to have that page just get totally soaked. So just giving her a little bit of shading here underneath so it looks like she's sitting on the ground and it's a little black, right? So it looks a little at odds with some of my other blues. I'm just gonna come in and add some of my indigo over the top of that just to make it feel a little more cohesive on the page. So now it looks like she's sort of landed in the corner. She's sitting here in some deep reflection. We have some energies moving. We have maybe a, a guide or an angel or an old story to be released. I'm not really sure yet what's going on over there and I may not know for a while but what I love about art journaling is that you know I will come back to these pages right I will come back to these pages and look at them again I don't need to know right now what everything means but there's something about doing intuitive collage this way that the meaning will become apparent if I'm patient, right? If I'm patient and just allow that to arise over time, 
there's always something new to be learned. There's always something new to be learned. We've got a white Posca marker here. Just again, I'm gonna come in. And I'm feeling like I want to make her even a little bit more my own. And that she needs some hair, right? Hair is also for me, there's something about releasing hair. Let me try this one after the one. Crimson. And I'm going to mix it again with my indigo, which is going to give me kind of a dark purpley brown. Get that brush really dry. And painting over magazine images is fun. It's easy to do, especially when you have added that matte medium. This feels like it's just going to continue to add to that feeling of her just being in the flow of release. And if I don't like it, I'm just going to take one of those Sharpies Hmm. She's blending with her background. That's kind of what ended up happening rather than having it be sort of flowy like hair. But I can come back in and just add a little more of that flow. Maybe it's this person who's kind of in that flow, at one with her environment. I'm feeling like, like somehow she's a representation of my younger self. And so to make her feel even more like me, I've been wearing glasses since I was sophomore in high school. So maybe I'm gonna come in and just add some glasses on her. Just have some fun with this, right? Just continue to create things that um, I'm led to do just following that. So this is definitely feeling like it's too dark, but adding, I did like adding that dark so I'm gonna take that wipe and it's gonna push some of it back but not all of it and so we just have it now again the matte medium is magic for being able to work on your pages so again she just looks like she's sort of resting in this space where lots of things are bubbling to the surface, ready to be released, and she's releasing those onto the page. Do I still want to come in here? Nope. I am feeling like this is done. I've got a little bit of a pen smear going on there, so I can just wipe that away and then come back and clean that up one more time with my pen. And it's important to take time to really just reflect on our pages to not feel like we have to finish them in one sitting. We have to finish them in one sitting. 
but I'm kind of digging the, like it feels pretty profound in terms of what does it look like to be in the energy of release, in the energy of release. <clears throat> and I am going to quickly check and see what the question is for Monday. I will be back on Monday. Hmm, it's going to be a fun one. What did I learn in the past year? So I will be back on Monday. Thank you. Good morning. It's great to see you, Blanca. It was um, a, a fun page to create. I am excited to be back on Monday and continue this process with all of you. And I realized as I was looking ahead to what's coming that I didn't have 22 full spreads. So some of my spreads will be just one page. Didn't take any less time to create one as opposed to both. So it's just something to notice as well. But this is definitely all about what do I want to release? And I kind of want the word release. What am I releasing? So I'm just going to write the question so that I remember. So what am I releasing? And just writing that one little prompt down there will help me remember what each of these pages was about. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Manette. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. And I will see you all next week. Have a, a wonderful, enjoyable, and creative weekend. Bye-bye.